RNIB, opening up creative culture. Bristol Museum and Art Gallery. Paul Sullivan, Museum Learning Officer. Well, audio description's been happening in Bristol's museum service for at least 10 years now, well before I came. It was delivered for visually impaired people in the form of described tours of temporary exhibitions. So one-off events, which meant that if you came to the museum on any other day hoping for a description, it wasn't available. More recently, we've been experimenting with providing permanent audio description on demand using a device called a PEMFRIEND and we did a pilot project in our Egypt gallery and that gave us confidence to make PEMFRIEND audio description available at our new City History Museum, MSHED. But what we have done in addition to that is provide description of some temporary exhibitions using the audio device, the PEMFRIEND. And the trick now is for us to develop descriptions that suit everybody so they meet the needs of the visually impaired person who can't see the image or the object being talked about but also do that in a way that doesn't put off those who can. Audio description, training and development. Well one of my functions is to train colleagues to deliver audio description and I think there are three essential elements and they need to be delivered within a fairly brief time frame. The first is to say what it is you're describing, so the name of the picture, what it is you're looking at. Then describe it in a systematic way so that one feature links to another and it all makes sense. And then the third piece is to say something interesting about it, the kind of feeling it evokes, the techniques that the artist has used, that kind of additional information which everybody likes to hear, whether they can actually see the object or not. Still Life with Oysters, painted by the artist Eugène Boudin in about 1850. In this painting, we are looking at carefully arranged objects on a table. The table is laden with nuts and fruit, glassware, a wicker basket and oysters on a platter. The colours in this accomplished still life are muted, yet there is a sharp note of the cut lemons in the right foreground and the warmth of the pears behind. But it is the oysters in the centre left which dominate the composition. Their succulent cream and white flesh and freshly opened shells are painted in a way that almost makes us feel, get a tactile sense of their wet surface with our eyes. In the background, the composition is closed off by the wall panelling, calmly focusing all our attention on the simple things in front of our eye level. It is important to remember that oysters were an everyday staple in coastal communities during the 19th century and did not carry the connotation of luxury we give them today. Eugène Boudin probably painted this still life just a few years after he gave up his stationary business and went to Paris to train as an artist. The composition and subject matter demonstrate that he had studied 17th century Dutch still life paintings, very specifically the way in which the fruit knife extends over the edge of the table towards us is a typical device of his Dutch models, blurring the boundary between painted and real world. On the other hand, his relatively free handling of the paint also shows his affinity with the contemporary Barbizon painters. That's really great Jenny, I think you've captured the elements that I want in a good description. You've told me what it is, you've described all the elements and you've added all that extra information about the, the um, artist and, and the way he works. And I love the way you've captured the, the sort of tactile nature of this image. You brought out the textures. I can almost smell the lemons and, and feel the oysters. I like the word succulent that you used and you mentioned the flesh colour and it's all very sensual and really makes me feel like I can touch those objects and imagine them as very real in, in, in front of me. But I realised while I was reading it that there are certain things I could say to make it even a little bit clearer why this is such an intimate experience we're having because I'm standing so close to the, to the table corner here, to the table's edge, and I realise I'm not standing over the table, I'm not looking down at the objects, but I also don't appear to be, as the spectator, to be sitting down because that, that would be a really odd height for a chair. 
So actually what Boudin's done is he's, he's chosen a, a position where you, you're probably kind of crouching down almost to the height of a child and, and all of these objects coming straight towards you. So he's not actually being very realistic here because he wants us to focus on the sensation of the objects. So he takes some realism away somewhere else in order to heighten the kind of sensation and the experience. So I need to kind of boil that down into maybe just one sentence or so and stick that in somewhere. Yeah, that's really interesting, Jenny, and I think you're right. You do need to add something in about that eye line, that perspective, because as a visually impaired person, I have no access to that information without you saying so, Yeah. without your description. Audio description for all visitors. Jenny Gashka, Fine Art Curator. Throughout my career, what I have found is that whoever my visitors are who I take through a gallery, they really enjoy being given a full description of what they see in front of them. And that's definitely the case because a painting will create a certain reaction in you or it will trigger a certain feeling in you. And you may want to find out why it does so. And that's really because the painter has painted it in a particular way because he's conceived a particular composition. And often you can explain the reaction you have to a painting by looking exactly at how it's done. So what I find exciting about developing the audio guide with Paul is that for me it's about any visitor. It's not about whether you're visually impaired or whether you can see any one of them will benefit definitely from being taken through what is in front of them. And that then also allows us to say really quite complex things beyond what is in the picture, because we can develop it out of what we see in the composition. We're trying to here develop an approach which meets the needs of as many people as possible. And we're going to do this in a multi-layered way so that the first piece of information that you will hear is a very brief description, about a minute to a minute and a half, saying what the object is, what it looks like, what's interesting about it, in a way that meets the needs of people who can't see it, so you're telling them what's there in front of them, but doesn't put off people that are able to see it for themselves. And that's quite a skill in itself. Um, but m some people will want additional much more detailed description so that can be delivered as a second piece of audio or a second layer and then of course you can build on lots of different layers to meet other people's needs you could have different language tra um, translations of that description you could have a more technical uh, description for the for the for the expert viewer hearer uh, you can have all kinds of different layers of information that people can choose as options once they've listened to the first level. The way we've been working in the museum on these audio guides for the French Gallery is that we meet every two weeks in a small group of colleagues who come from all different departments across the museum. And um, we've confessed to each other recently that we all really, really look forward to these meetings because we get to talk about art and about pictures and about content for, for an hour or two and don't worry about any of our sort of daily tasks uh, across the museum. We really have that time to home in on, on these fantastic objects and we all um, really, really enjoy that. RNIB, supporting blind and partially sighted people. Logos for Arts Council England. Punch Records, Imagineer Productions and Ironbridge Gorge Museum Trust.